I hate to say it because I've just been waiting on him to break out and prove me wrong, but Justin Fields is just not good. It's year three and he's still really bad. There was this expectation that Justin Fields was going to break out this season and finally come into his own as a passer. And that just hasn't happened. At a certain point, you come to the realization that if a young quarterback isn't good enough, he probably shouldn't be your franchise guy. And I think we're starting to get close to that for Justin Fields, but there's a lot more at play here than just him playing bad. There are a ton of issues around him too, specifically an atrocious offensive line, and that surely doesn't help. The Bears are just a bad football team. They've lost 12 straight games, and there hasn't been improvements on the field, and I think we're quickly approaching a clean house in Chicago, and it's not going to be pretty. The Bears are already 0-2, and you can probably go ahead and chalk that up to 0-3 once they visit the Chiefs this upcoming weekend. Kansas City is currently a 12 and a half point favorite which is an insane line for an NFL game. But everyone knows just how bad Chicago is. In week one, they hosted the Packers. For whatever crazy reason, Green Bay was actually expected to be worse than the Bears in the offseason, and I think a lot of that came from the uncertainty of Jordan Love. But he's looked pretty good so far. The Packers were clearly the better team. Even without Aaron Rodgers, the Packers still owned the Bears. It ended up being 38 to 20. A late Chicago touchdown made it look a little better, but it was really 38 to 14. It was just not good. Justin Fields was 24 of 37 for 216 yards, a touchdown, and an interception, which went for a Quay Walker pick six. The run game was also atrocious. Fields was the top rusher with 59 yards, and Khalil Herbert was next up with only 27 yards on nine carries. The Bears needed to show any kind of improvement in week two on the road, and didn't. Again, Chicago played a team that was expected to be the worst in their division in the offseason, the Buccaneers. Baker Mayfield and his new squad improved to 2-0 with a 27-17 win. It was actually tied before the last play of the first half, but Chicago never came back. It was 20-17 pretty late, but then Justin Fields threw his second pick six of the year to Shaquille Barrett. He had a pretty rough day. Fields went 16-29 of 29 for 211 yards, a touchdown, and two interceptions. The run game wasn't working again. Khalil Herbert had 35 yards on seven carries, and the Bears only had 16 rushes all game. There is one big positive that I do want to point out though, and that's DJ Moore. He had 104 yards on six receptions. He was the Bears' big offseason acquisition, and we finally got to see him do his thing in Chicago. I do think that DJ Moore was a huge reason for all the high expectations for Justin Fields this offseason. Kind of like how Josh Allen broke out once the Bills traded for Stephon Diggs, or how Jalen Hurts did this last year with AJ Brown. The problem is that Allen and Hurts both looked better before those guys than Fields has really ever looked. Justin Fields desperately needed better weapons around him, and DJ Moore is proven. He's in year six now, and he's had a stretch with three straight 1,000-yard seasons. Moore is really good. I want to make that clear. He's a very good NFL wideout, but it's not like he's ever elevated the Panthers to be like this winning team or anything, and I don't know why he would have been in Chicago either. I wouldn't necessarily consider him elite elite, but he's a really good wide receiver, and the Panthers didn't want to trade him. Carolina traded for that first overall pick to take Bryce Young, and Chicago wanted more, so they did what they had to do to move up from nine. This is also just a friendly reminder that the Bears did in fact just have the first overall pick. They were the worst team in football last season. The idea that they would just turn around overnight seems a bit wild. That takes time, especially when there wasn't a major change at quarterback or head coach. You had the Jaguars go from worst to the postseason last year, but they had a coaching change and Urban Meyer to Doug Peterson made a huge difference. The Bears are in season two with Matt Eberflus and Ryan Poles, and Justin Fields, of course, is in his third season. At some point, there has to be some improvement if all three of them are gonna keep their jobs, and that just hasn't happened yet. I'd say that Justin Fields is playing like the same dude he was last year, but that's not even the case. He's somehow been even worse. Justin Fields is not playing like an NFL-level quarterback right now. He doesn't read the field well, feels slow with his dropbacks and throwing motion, and clearly struggles to make the right decisions. Although I will say, sometimes the play calling feels like it's set up for him to fail. He looks like a rookie going through growing pains. But here's the thing. 
He's not a rookie. In fact, I'd say CJ Stroud, the Ohio State starter right after him, already has shown a better understanding of NFL decision making. So what happened last season and why did Justin Fields have so much hype around him this year? Well, he was incredible with his legs. He rushed for a touchdown in six consecutive games. He broke the NFL record for rushing yards in a single game and he became just the third quarterback to rush for a thousand yards in a season, joining Michael Vick and Lamar Jackson. Fields was suddenly great for fantasy football, but the same passing problems he had as a rookie were still there. He passed for 17 touchdowns all season and threw 11 picks. Sure, it was an improvement from his rookie year when he had 10 interceptions and only 7 passing touchdowns, but it still wasn't that good. The hype around him and his game just got completely overblown. He just hasn't been very good, and honestly, that 2021 quarterback class is a bit of a disaster looking back. Obviously, you got Trevor Lawrence, who's good, and I personally think Matt Mac Jones is solid and will probably be a starter in the league for a minute, but then the other three quarterbacks taken in the first round are pretty rough. Zach Wilson, Trey Lance, and Justin Fields. I don't know where it all went wrong. Justin Fields does not look like the same player he was at Ohio State. It feels like he's forgotten everything and is just kind of doing his own thing. It feels like a sinking ship, and it just keeps getting worse. After the loss to the Bucks, Fields said he felt like he was robotic and not playing like himself. He was asked why that may be, and his response has caused a ton of drama, because he essentially blamed coaching. Now the quote is a lot more complex than just that. Fields said they were doing their job, and he's preparing throughout the week, but once game time comes, Comes, he needs to think less and play more. It's going to be really interesting to watch him this week against the Chiefs because he said his goal is to kind of say F it and go out there and play football how he knows how to play. So essentially, he wants to think less and play off of his instincts and just be himself, which sounds like it could go really, really well or be a complete disaster. So honestly, I can't wait to see which one it is. Playing just straight up off instincts feels very Taylor Heineke-esque. He seems to just kind of play off vibes for real. Sometimes it's amazing and goes really well, and other times he sucks. So at the very least, it's super fun to watch. And at this point, the Bears should really just let Justin Fields go out there and try something new. Because what Chicago is doing right now just isn't working. It is really important to point out that all the Bears' problems are not just Justin Fields. This is a failure from top to bottom. It's hard to expect a young quarterback to develop correctly when the coaching staff around him is kind of a mess. Justin Fields has not looked good in the Bears' offense but it's a bad system too. He does make it look worse at times, but it's ugly to start. Those back-to-back -back Aaron Rodgers MVPs looked absolutely incredible. Not only did Rodgers drag Mike McCarthy to a Super Bowl ring, but then he was the best player in football with Nathaniel Hackett as his offensive coordinator and Luke Getze as his quarterback's coach. Hackett was a disaster in Denver and got fired after a single year. And now it feels like Getze might not last too long in Chicago either. The same goes for really the whole staff. For whatever reason, the Bears have abandoned designed runs after they were just so successful for them a season ago. It was working, so they stopped. Seems pretty damn logical. The play calling is bad, the roster is bad, I mean it couldn't have gotten much worse, and then the defensive coordinator Alan Williams resigned after his house was reportedly raided. There have been a lot of rumors out there and some things that aren't confirmed or are wrong. Pat McAfee did say his sources told him his house was indeed raided. There are a lot of questions, but whatever it is, it isn't good. It's a full panic in literally every way in Chicago right now. I do have a positive for you though. The Bears have two first round picks, their own and the Panthers, who also seem to suck. Things just aren't working right now, but you can restart again and maybe one day the Bears will at least be better than the Packers. Thank you guys for watching and making it all the way to the end of the video. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already because football season is here and we're going to be posting damn near every single day throughout the season. So stay up to date with everything JD Productions by turning on the bell notification and following us on other social media platforms so you can get some extra content from us if that's something that you're interested in. Thank you again and see you guys in the next one. Peace. By the way, if you made it all the way to this point in the video, uh, I know this is like a select few people that actually made it this far. Comment ravioli down below because nobody's going to know what the hell you're talking about and it's just going to be funny as hell. So comment ravioli down below if you made it to this point. See you guys in the next one.